Battle of Rook's Rest, House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 4 Ending Revealed. Did two characters die? In the early hours of the battle at Rook's Rest, Kristen Cole orders his army to prepare for an assault. Ser Gwain protests, suggesting a night siege due to their proximity to Dragonstone and the risk of encountering the Black's dragons. Ignoring the advice, Kristen insists on a daytime attack, and the Green Army begins mobilizing from their encampment in the nearby forest. As they advance with multiple siege weapons and hundreds of infantry, they face heavy resistance from the Staunton garrison led by Lord Simon, who subjects the attackers to multiple volleys of arrows. Despite significant losses, the Green Army makes steady progress until they spot Malaise, the dragon, in the air. The Greens retreat to the tree lean, and Gwen reprimands Kristen for his decision. Kristen reveals that this is part of his plan and orders signal arrows to be fired, alerting soldiers deeper in the forest to blow horns. This signals Emond and Vagar to enter the battle. At the same time, Aegon arrives atop Sunfire, having departed King's Landing earlier. Emond, furious at his brother's unexpected presence, delays his entry. Malaise begins laying waste to Kristen's army with Dragonfire. Seeing Sunfire approach, Kristen, shocked by Aegon's entry, orders more signal arrows to be fired and rallies the Green Army. Rhaenys, spotting Aegon and Sunfire, orders Malaise to attack. Sunfire strikes first with fire, which Rhaenys narrowly dodges. Malaise then attacks from below, heavily injuring Sunfire. Aegon struggles to control his dragon, whose boiling blood injures green soldiers. Malaise continues to assault Sunfire, damaging its wing. Lord Simon and the Staunton garrison see Vagar emerge from the tree lean, to the relief of Kristen and the Green Army. As Malaise assaults Sunfire, both Rhaenys and Aegon spot Emond and Vagar advancing. Aegon is initially relieved but then horrified as Emond attacks both of them. Vagar's dragonfire strikes Aegon and Sunfire, causing them to crash into the forest. Kristen rides off to the impact site in horror. Rhaenys and Malays, largely unharmed, fly seaward away from Rook's Rest. Despite the chance to escape, Rhaenys returns to the battle. Eamon spots Malays and confronts her with Vagar. Rhaenys uses Malays's speed to attack from below, but Vagar catches Malays and tries to blast her with dragonfire. Malays slashes Vagar's underbelly causing Vagar to spray fire erratically. The dragons become entangled and fall, causing panic among the green army. Malaise breaks loose and flies off, while Vagar crashes violently, crushing many soldiers and knocking Kristen unconscious. Emond and Vagar recover swiftly, crushing more green soldiers as they take flight. Exhausted and injured, Rhaenys and Malaise attempt to depart to Dragonstone. They are suddenly attacked from below by Vagar. Vagar's jaws crush Malaise's neck and both Rhaenys and Malays plummet from the sky, crashing into the walls of Rook's Rest in a blast of fire. Sometime after Rhaenys and Malays's death, Kristen rouses from unconsciousness to the horrid sight of his decimated army in the burnt-out battlefield. In the distance, he sees Ser Gwain rallying what little remains of the Green Army to push through the breach created by Malays's body and capture Rook's Rest. Kristen proceeds to make his way through the carnage towards Aegon's crash site, attempting to enlist the aid of a soldier, only to discover the man is merely an incinerated skeleton that disintegrates at his touch. Kristen eventually arrives at Aegon's crash site in the forest, spotting both a severely injured Sunfire and Emond approaching with his sword unsheathed. As Kristen inquires on Aegon's location, Emond wordlessly points forward with Aegon's dagger, revealing his shattered body motionless with Sunfire curled around him. Speechless, Kristen collapses to his knees in shock as Emond departs. I'm sure many fans are wondering, is King Aegon alive? He actually did not die even though his burns caused him such pain that some say he prayed for death. Brought back to King's Landing in a closed litter to hide the extent of his injuries, his grace did not leave his bed for the rest of the year.